Hey young guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. Today we're going to be continuing on with our Frenocrane project. Today I'm going to be working on the diffs. But before we get started, I thought I would answer a very common comment we got in the last video. A lot of people were very concerned that I was throwing away the bonnets and wondering why I didn't just repair them. If you watched the tour video when we first purchased the crane, you would see that the bonnets are in really bad condition and all the hinge points were completely rusted through. So as you can see, the rust is not only in the cap, the bonnet that covers the engine is completely rusted out so it is something else that I will need to rebuild. Rather than try and repair the old ones I'm just going to make some new ones. So if you've been following along you'd be aware that we found water in the rear diff and we did find out that was coming from a breather that was missing so that explains how all the water got in there. But what that means I'm going to have to drain the diff and clean everything out to get all of the water out of it so I don't end up with surface rust on the crown wheel, pinion or the rest of the diff. I'm not going to try and attempt to pull out the diff center while the diffs are still mounted in the crane. Rather than risk hurting myself or damaging something, I'm going to remove the entire diff out of the crane. That way it's out here and I can handle it and everything's safe. And even though the front diff hasn't got any water in it, I am going to drain it and remove it from the crane so I can do a full inspection. inch breaker bar. Of course it's all bird over. I'm gonna need a wacky stick. What's grease? Nothing in there, it's dry as. That's that bit done. They've got a, about a 40 mil gap in them between the bottom pin and the spring. So there's a lot of movement there that has to be accounted for. Lock them from moving to a point. Then I lift this up, the springs will land on the key steel. They won't actually land on their pins. So it'll eliminate about 50 mil of travel. Keep snapping.
That's for the diff lock. Righto, now that I've got the diff drained and the stands repositioned, we can now go ahead and pull out the diff. Ideally, you generally undo the U-bolts and just drop the diff away from the leaf springs, but because of how rusty they are, the likelihood of undoing them is very slim. So I might just end up removing the front pin for the trailing arm, the rear pin that holds the spring in place and dropping the whole lot in one assembly. That was easy. them back on and we'll just pull it out like one piece. Everything just sees that solid. In this rod end there is a rubber bush and in the rubber bush is a steel sleeve. At the moment the steel sleeve is attached to the bolt through rust and it has just broken the bush away and now everything's just spinning. Rather than waste any more time on this I'm just going to cut the, the traction rod and I'll deal with it when it's out. Bent the buggery.
Righto, so that's the rear diff out. That was pretty easy to remove. Now we're going to go to the front one. Oh, the rollers fell out. That's right, we'll replace them anyway. That's probably enough oil. We just won't spill it when we get it out. Oh yeah. Those are vicious little birds. They're like chihuahuas.
So we're going to get started on inspecting the rear diff. So the diffs in our crane, they are exactly the same part number. All they have done is just flip the diff around so it runs the other way. The rear diff has spring hangers so the springs can be attached and the front diff just has plates so it gets bolted into position on the crane. What makes up a complete diff is the diff housing and then the center. This particular one is also fitted with a diff lock so if it gets into uneven ground or you've got one wheel spinning and no traction, you engage the diff lock and the two wheels lock together so you can then drive out of whatever problem you're in. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna unbolt the center from the housing. We're gonna lift that out of the way and have a look inside and see if we can find any water marks on bearings or on gear teeth and just check the overall condition on how things are. And the culprit to this entire problem is right there. Lock tight. So that's the center removed from the housing. I'm just gonna put that to the side and we'll inspect the diff housing first. So after having a good look inside, we can see there is a little bit of rust in the top of the housing, and that is from the water getting in there. The hole where the water was getting in also has a little bit of rust around it, but all in all, it's in pretty good shape. So we did find there are two magnets in the bottom of the housing, and they are to collect metal from when the diff is working. They've done their job, they have collected quite a bit of material. It'll be interesting to see what the diff center itself looks like. So all in all, the housing's in pretty good condition. It just needs a really good clean on the inside, and the outside, we're going to get it Sandblasting. So I'll get the housing out of the way, we'll throw the diff center on a pallet and turn it up so we can have a look at it. So what makes up this diff assembly, you have the main housing that everything is mounted to. Going into that housing is a pinion, and the pinion is what is used to drive the crown wheel. And the crown wheel is the big gear on the diff center itself. As you turn the pinion, it rotates the crown wheel. So in its current configuration, we have the actuator on top of the diff, that connects to a fork, which then goes to your diff lock sprocket. When the air is applied, it will engage, locking the two axles together. And down the bottom is the other half of the diff center, and inside that are the two splines where your axles get fed into. So after a quick inspection, obviously the oil is really dirty and there is some grit getting around. That would have just been from material coming through that breather hole. There is a little bit of rust marks on the faces of the crown wheel, but it does wipe away with your finger. You can't really feel it. So I was a little bit worried. I did see what looked to be a piece of the bearing that had been broken out, but I did do a quick search of that part number, and it turns out those bearings are supposed to be like that. So a pretty good outcome for this diff, even though it is quite dirty and the oil had water in it, it's still in pretty good condition. What I'm going to do now is pull the front diff apart and see what shape it's in. Righto, so because this housing was turned up the other way in order to use it on the crane, the magnets were actually in the top of the diff housing itself. But you can see they have collected a little bit, but nowhere near as much as the rear diff. 
So after inspecting the front diff housing, it's in about the same shape as the rear one. The inside needs a good clean and it needs to be sandblasted. So I'll get this out of the way and then we'll put the centre up on the pallet and have a look at that. So this diff's in really good shape as well. There are no signs of bearing damage. All the faces of the teeth are in really good condition and there's no excess backlash between the crown wheel and the pinion. So these will just need a really good cleanup.
Righto guys, so that's our diffs disassembled and cleaned. I still need to reassemble them, sandblast them and paint them. And while they're out of the crane and everything's nice and easy to work on, I am gonna change the pinion seals and rebuild the actuators for the diff locks. But you'll have to stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching. <sighs> you think we need to get started? Right, you ready? Yep. How you going guys? So in its current <coughs> word, so in its <laughs> look, Curtis is doing what are they called domestic duties? <laughs> this is how I clean the house. Well, I went to the tool shop and I walked in, and one of the guys behind the counter was using one of them to blow out the entrance to the shop. I thought straight away, Curtis, you need one of them. Hey, 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 noisy thing. Heaps of room in this engine bay for a Cummins CPT. You got a friend in your hair. Do I? <laughs> Ew! Look at me, I've got hair to catch stuff. <laughs> Is that gonna leak everywhere? Eventually. That's nasty. Do you need it for the other side? <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> what the fuck was that? Uh, what was that? Still in my mouth. <laughs> Good, is making the most of his new toy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yep. Something's on the roof. <laughs> so we're gonna get started on disassembling the rear diff. What makes up a diff house? Mm. Are you gonna say disassemble? Should draw an A around it, the A hole. Oh, that's nasty. You should have a glove on. Ew. Two eyes, dribble. Yeah. Oh my god, they're bullying George. Who is? The little willy wagtails. Look, they're picking on him. They must have a nest somewhere. You'll get it. You pick on the big dog because the big dog spins around and eats their babies. <laughs> Jesus. I like cleaning their beaks on the crane. <laughs> <laughs> <You're terrible>. Oh. <Aww. laughs> but you'll have to stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching. Are you gonna get up and go away? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All the noises. Everyone be quiet. Just be quiet. Just George. <laughs>